Hello, welcome to this edition of the Telescope Makers Workshop. My name is Francis O'Reilly and I'll be your host as we discuss the restoration of a Criterion Dynascope RV6 telescope. When I was a boy in the 1970s, I always wanted to have a eight in, I'm sorry, a six inch F8 telescope so that I could observe. I was very interested in observing. My parents went to Lafayette Corp and bought me a four inch reflector and I wore that telescope out. But I really wanted a six inch F8. Times being what they were, they were relatively expensive and I was unable to obtain one. I wanted an Edmund Scientific Telescope. This January 1976 edition of the Edmunds catalog, many of us will remember, has an advertisement in it for the Deluxe, uh, the Super Space Conqueror. It's a six inch F8 telescope complete with a clock drive for the princely sum of $285. Edmunds no longer makes telescopes. Now they're made by companies like Mead and Celestron. Interestingly, a six inch F8 telescope can still be had in the $300 range. A used Edmunds telescope can still be had in the same price range of two to $300 and sometimes less. I purchased several Criterion Dynascope RV6, which is a 6 inch f8.3 telescope, and I actually have three cave optical tube assemblies that are also 6 inch f8. And they went pretty much in that order. Low end was Edmonds, then Criterion, and then Cave. All were made in America by relatively small operators, Edmonds being the largest of the three. Edmonds is still in business, Criterion was bought out, and Cave, Mr. Cave retired I believe in 1980. These were all the classic telescopes that a young man would want to have, or a young astronomer, I don't want to, don't want to be too sexist about this, would want to have. Eventually, as I've said, I've ended up with several of them. I make my own telescopes, but it's nice to have these old telescopes. The Criterion RV6 that I intend to restore is a classic telescope that I would estimate would be from the early 1970s. It has a gray tube, it has a clock drive. The clock drive is somewhat mucked up uh, over the years. The grease that was in it seems to have congealed it needs to be taken apart and cleaned. In this video, we will go through the steps of taking apart and rebuilding the equatorial head, the clock drive, and also the tube, which has some holes in it, will be repaired. Finally, and this may be some months down the road, I intend to test the mirror, see how it is, and if it's good, fine. If it's not, I'm going to refigure it so that it's an accurate parabola. I'm told by a friend that the reason Criterion made an F8.3 was because F8.3 for a 6 inch telescope fell within a spherical mirror at that, at that uh, focal length, fell within the Rayleigh criteria for being a quarter wave optic. So we're going to take a look at that, but that's going to be several months down the road to see how that looks. This video is going to take a slightly different format than my previous videos in that I'm going to have a lot of still photos and I will narrate the timeline for the still photos. As with most of my videos, they will stay within the 10 to 15 minute range per video. We'll start with the disassembly of the clock drive, then we'll move on to the cleaning, the reassembly, and then we'll move on to the optical tube assembly. This is my Criterion RV6 Dynascope, manufactured by the Criterion Manufacturing Company in Hartford, Connecticut in the early 1970s 
This telescope is now showing its age. I purchased it for about $300 on eBay in 2008, just slightly less than it sold for new in the early 1970s. The tube is worn, and on the eyepiece side there are two holes where a camera holder was originally placed. It has evidently been ripped off, leaving the two holes on the side of the tube. The equatorial head, clock drive, and pier are likewise somewhat old and gummed up. The clock drive no longer works. The pier is in need of a rebuild and repaint, although it still holds the telescope well. In this view, you can see the focuser assembly along with the tube which shows two holes underneath the focuser assembly. A tag displays the name of the telescope as well as its serial number. The nuts that you can see hold the spider assembly which holds the secondary mirror which reflects the light from the primary mirror to the eyepiece assembly held by the focuser assembly. All of these parts will be disassembled, cleaned, and repaired. The two holes in the tube are going to be taped. Fiberglass will be installed in the holes, and then the tape will be removed from the outside of the tube the fiberglass will be sanded, Bondo auto body prime, auto body filler will be inserted, sanded down. The entire tube will then be sanded down and repainted its original battleship gray color. The inside of the tube is painted flat black, the flattest black that can be found. The flat black will also be uh, repainted to restore the inside of the telescope tube to its original condition. A close-up view of the equatorial head shows the prominent large thumb screw that is rusted. The declination circle is corroded. The hour circle, the slip ring type hour circle, likewise is corroded. The pointers still exist, however they are rusted. The shaft collars are rusted, although serviceable. And the three quarter inch hex nut, which holds the equatorial head to the pier, is also rusted. I intend to repair or replace all of it. The equatorial uh, head is a very important element of the telescope, obviously. The slip ring is corroded and simply needs to be cleaned. The setting circle for the declination likewise is corroded and just needs to be cleaned. I'm sure that I can clean up the shaft collars, and there are actually three of them uh, that are rusted, but can probably be clean. They're held in with hex nuts. The thumb screw uh, is pretty much irreplaceable. You're not going to be able to find a thumb screw that big and that odd looking, so I'm going to do my best to clean that up. Maybe use a little navel jelly on it if it turns out to be steel. The um, chromed pieces, the uh, pointers, both for the um, declination and for the hour circles, the right ascension, are rusted. I'm going to try to uh, sand them and see if I can't save them. I may have to have them re-chromed. We'll see what happens with that. Completing my survey of the telescope, I'm looking at two things. I'm looking both at the rings that hold the tube to the telescope, uh, to the mount rather, and I note that they open, the nuts are okay, the wing nuts are okay. 
It's missing the green felt that lines the inside and that will need to be replaced. I also look at the declination shaft and the weight. I note that the weight is black but somewhat rusted. And one of the items that I see a lot and that I hear a lot about is how do you get the weight and the shaft collar off the declination shaft? They seem to be stuck. That's usually because the shaft collar was really torqued into the declination shaft and deformed it a little bit, left a mark in there, and the uh, shaft collar gets hung up on that. And the best way to do it, quite frankly, is somewhat akin to the bigger hammer theory. Just take that, just loosen the screw, the set screw on the lower shaft collar, take the weight, and slam it down. And I did that, the shaft collar came off, and as we'll see in a later video, we then addressed the issue with respect to the shaft collar and to the um, declination shaft. We cleaned that up real nicely, real quickly. Well, that concludes the survey of my RV6. The next videos are going to show the steps we take in repairing it.